Now, here are the best Ethernet settings for gaming in 2025 to lower your ping for less latency and to increase Ethernet speeds. Now, the first thing you want to go ahead and do is click on the Windows bar. And then once you've clicked on that, go ahead and type in Control Panel and hit Enter right away. Great. Now, once in your control panel, you want to go ahead and click on network and internet. Excellent. Now, once you go ahead and click on network and sharing center and wait for it to load. Now, once you're in this interface, you're going to see that we have some options on the left-hand side of the screen. The one we're going to be choosing is the change adapter settings on the left-hand side. Now, once you've selected that, you need to pay attention at this point of this video. Great. Now, lock in. Now, you can see that we have four different network adapters. We have a Bluetooth adapter. We have our Ethernet 1, Ethernet 2 and our Wi-Fi, but for the sake of this video, we're focusing on just Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2. Now, the difference between Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2 is that Ethernet 1 is the Ethernet cable that is connected directly to your PC's Ethernet port. However, Ethernet 2 or maybe let's say you have Ethernet 3 or 4, all of those Ethernet cables are connected probably through a USB hub and that is Ethernet 2. Now, for those using Ethernet 2, you might have to follow along with what we do in Ethernet 1 because they might both be crucial for you. Now, the first thing you want to go ahead and do is right click on Ethernet. Now, once here, you want to go ahead and click on properties at the bottom, and then you can go ahead and drag this tab to the center of your screen. Now, once here, go ahead and click on configure. And then once it's in this interface, you want to go ahead and look for power management at the right hand side of your screen. Now, once in power management, make sure that you've unchecked every single thing in this tab. Once you've done that, just go ahead and click on OK. Great. Now go ahead and right click on Ethernet again and click on properties. Now once you've clicked on properties, drag this to the center once again and click on configure. Now this time around, we want to drag it to the center and then we want to go ahead and click on the advanced tab. Once in the advanced tab, you want to go ahead and maybe enlarge it. I don't think you can enlarge it, but that's perfectly fine. But as you can see, there is Myrad or there are a series of options here that we are going to make sure that we get right in order to get our Ethernet cable working well. And so pay attention to every single thing I say at this point point. Great. Now, for those using Ethernet 2, 3, or any other number, there are some settings here that are the same as the ones in Ethernet 2. So just make sure to do the same thing when you see anything here that correlates with what's in Ethernet 2. And it's the same steps that you have to do to get there. Great. Now, once you're here, make sure that you look for ARP offload. And once you've seen that, go ahead and click on enabled and disable this right away. Now, go ahead and click on flow control as well. And then we also want to go ahead and disable this as well. Now, go ahead and look for interrupt moderation, which is next on the list and then make sure that you disable this make sure it's not enabled it's disabled once you're done with that we're going to see the ipv4 checksum offload as well for this one as well you want to go ahead and disable it as well now i know it seems like we're disabling everything but that's not it just yet now let's go ahead and click on the jumbo frame now once you've clicked on the jumbo frame you want to go ahead and remove this from disabled and choose the highest number possible that you can see here mine is 9014 bytes so i'm going to choose that and then i'm going to go ahead and go to the large send offload now for large send offload you want to go ahead and disable the first one and then you want to click on the second one again and then you want to go ahead and disable this as well now the next one on the list is the network address now for the network address what you want to go ahead and do is leave it on not present or just don't touch this and then we can go over to the the ns offload as well now for this one what we want to go ahead and do is to also disable this because we will not be needing it. Now, the next thing on the list is the priority and VLAN. Now, the thing that you want to go ahead and do for this one is to go ahead and click on this and then leave this on the priority that it was already on or leave it on priority enabled. Both of them are going to work pretty good for you. And so I don't really bother about this. And then, oh, you can go ahead and test it if you feel like you have any issues with it because priority and VLAN are probably the best settings that you can leave this on. Now, for receive buffer, you want to go ahead and click on this and then you can go ahead and change the value of this to any high value i'm going to make this 2000 and i'm going to click ok now this error message was very intentional and very intended now as you can see it tells us that we can only get a valid range if it's from 32 to 512 and so make sure that you change whatever value you have to 512 like we had before i intentionally did this so you could see what has to be changed now once you're done with this go ahead and click on the rev c and then make sure that you've disabled these two as well i think both of them are probably disabled from start and so you can leave them as disabled and once you're done with that you can see the next one which says shut down wake up leave that on disabled and you have the speed and the duplex now this is a very crucial one and so you need to pay attention here for this one you want to go ahead and click on the auto negation and then you want to go ahead and click on the 100 mps or click on the largest thing that you see here 
and then just make sure that it's full duplex and it's the longest now the reason why i said full duplex is because they also have a hundred megabyte that is half duplex make sure it's a hundred megabyte that is full duplex and once you've done that you want to go ahead and click on the tcp as well now for the tcp i really call this trial and error you can go ahead and enable just the rx or the tx and trials and see which one works best for you but disabling it i don't know if that's going to work for you i've never tried that before but i think that it's pretty okay when you leave it on its default settings now we want to go ahead and move over to the transmit buffer for this one again i'm going to leave it and i'm going to give it a value for like let's say 2000 and hit enter as you can see once again it gives you a range that you're supposed to go from from 32 to 128 and so i did this to show you that 128 is the highest value that you can put in now the next one is the udp once you get to the udp what we want to go ahead and do is to click on this and then once again this one is just as experimental as the previous one that we looked at so you can experiment with this but i like to leave it on my default settings because it's best for me when it comes to my ethernet connection cable settings now the next thing you want to go ahead and do is click on the vlan id you're going to see that it's zero now you want to leave it just as such and then you can also go ahead and click on the wake on magic packet leave this as such as well don't touch this and go on the wake on pattern match as well leave this as it is and then go to the last one and leave that one as it is as well now once you're done with these settings you can go Go ahead and click on OK. And once you've clicked on OK, you should see that it reboots or restarts your Ethernet connection cable. Now, for those that were in Ethernet 2, I'm going to right click and click on properties. I'm going to click on configure. I'm going to click on advanced. And as you can see, some of the settings that were in Ethernet 1, Ethernet 1 being the Ethernet connected directly to your computer's PCI or GB's, yes, it's the PCI GBE family controller that had more settings than this one had and so just make sure that the settings we did there are the same exact things that you did when it came to either ethernet 2 or 3 or 4 or how many ethernet numbers you have on yours now if you're watching this video on a pc you can switch over to a phone to listen to the tips that i have to say because you're going to have to restart or you can just restart and come back to the video if that works better for you now go ahead and click on your windows bar and just restart your pc and come back great now once you've restarted your computer all the settings that we did should be working perfectly for you now now there's an extra tip that most people will not tell you when it comes to ethernet connection and so you need to pay attention here this is an extra bonus tip now there are different kinds of ethernet cables out there there are ethernet cables that are faster than other ethernet cables like the other ones in different bands and different ranges and so make sure that the ethernet cable that you have is one of those i wouldn't say expensive but the fast ones that can get the internet to your computer in a very short amount of time this is a very crucial step most people won't teach you and that is what i've just taught you if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to smash the like subscribe and bell button and come join my discord down in the description if you happen to face any problems with that said it's your boy gg7 plays and i'll see you guys in my next video peace out